Corey at the hospital. Because you don't have insurance. I don't really care. You would if you saw what they charged to fix a flesh wound. The superpowers have been scrapped and the sex toys have been safely stowed back in the sock drawer. Because the new Saints Row has shed its shark jumping silliness and smutty tendencies in favor of a return to its open world gangland roots. However, this back to basics approach has borne out a fairly old fashioned kind of crime spree and stripping the series of its more outlandish elements has laid this reboot's inadequacies bare, with no pixelated modesty sensor big enough to hide its junk. While there's a decent amount of fun to be had chasing collectibles and causing chaos, outdated mechanics and repetitive mission design meant that by the end of my time with the new Saints Row, I was desperate for something that could genuinely surprise me, like a slap to the face from a 40 inch dildo. We need a name. The Saints. We call ourselves the Saints. That's not to say I wasn't entertained for significant stretches at a time, and while the rags to riches story of the new Saints gang in the sandswept city of Santo Eliso is anything but original, it at least facilitates a handful of B-grade action scenes that do a reasonably solid impersonation of Uncharted. Later, Gator. But in between these peaks is a relentless rinse and repeat cycle of wave-based shootouts against a handful of rival gangs that are largely indistinguishable from one another. The only ones that really stand out are these guys, who appear to have grown restless waiting for Ubisoft to announce a new Watch Dogs. Los Panteros should have left the party crashing to the experts. The combat itself is snappy and serviceable, and in the absence of a proper cover system is heavy on circle strafing and pulling off occasional execution moves in order to replenish your health mid-fight. <laughs> Dead as a doornail! It doesn't exactly create a propulsive ballet of ballistics to rival Doom Eternal, but it's a neatly streamlined setup that allows you to recover from damage without having to scramble for dropped medkits or fumble with the consumables menu. In addition, there's a recharging skill system that allows you to bind special abilities to four hotkeys, but although I had access to everything from flaming punches to the ability to shoot through walls, rarely did I feel the need to use them in favor of the more traditional skills like throwing grenades and activating temporary armor, which made for a mostly conventional brand of firefights. It's also fairly conventional in its approach to driving, though there are a handful of aircraft and boats to discover. Whoa, whoa, bail, bail, jump! Most of my time in Santo Aliso is spent behind the wheel of a healthy fleet of land vehicles. The floaty and largely homogenized handling meant that I never really grew to favor any one vehicle over the other, but the ability to drift and sideswipe other cars at the tap of a button does give chase sequences a welcome burst of burnout style gratification. The fact that you can scramble onto the roof at speed and launch into a wingsuit glide also makes for some spectacular getaways, although it seems like an oversight that you can't do the same thing from a motorbike saddle. You free and clear yet? Not at all. I've got cops up the ass. We're really good at what we do. So why are we doing it for other people and not ourselves? Joining your created boss character, who describes himself as I'm a walking murder party, are three other foundational members of the new Saints who accompany you on certain missions and provide consistently cringe-inducing banter in cutscenes that feel like they're straight out of a cheesy 80s sitcom. The only way this could be better is if you put on a fucking shirt. Dinner and a show, baby. Oh, please. <laughs> None of these partners in crime have particularly interesting personalities, but the one I warmed to the most by far was the brainy pacifist Eli, mainly because his side story missions involved donning some cardboard armor and swapping my assault rifle for a nerf gun in a series of live action role playing battles. The actual combat experience in these sections remained fundamentally the same as every other shooting gallery sequence, but they reminded me of the sticks and stone style warfare of South Park The Stick of Truth, and provided an enjoyable shift in tone from the more murderous mayhem found elsewhere. I know I got you that time, you're cheap. I'd have preferred to have Eli with me on more missions, but you can't change who you're stuck with. However, you can certainly change yourself, and Saints Row's impressive character customization tool allows you to completely alter your appearance at any time, either by crafting it yourself or importing one of the growing number of community creations. You really can let your imagination run wild, Although, I'm a fairly simple man with simple tastes, so I basically just bought the mariachi outfit, equipped the three amigos salute, and kept them for the 30 hours I spent playing. As of now, 
We are the proud owners of a shit ton of empty lots all across town. That's real estate we can use to start up some new uh, entrepreneurial ventures. As you progress through Saints Row's story, an increasing number of criminal ventures become available to purchase. Buying one of these businesses and completing its associated set of missions increases the hourly revenue of the Saints. And while you don't need to acquire all of the dozen ventures in order to complete the campaign, buying up roughly half of them is mandatory in order to unlock the final story missions. Which is a shame because precious few of them are actually any good. Admittedly, it will always be goofy good fun to bounce hundreds of feet in the air off a series of exploding cars in the returning insurance fraud challenges. I also found that tracking down and photographing specific materials throughout the map for the cutting edge fashion designer Exquisite. was a fairly novel way of unlocking new customization options for your clothing. However, the majority of ventures are forgettable and unevenly weighted, with the lower quality tasks seemingly higher in quantity. The Eureka Beta, a startup incubator for gadgets that allows you to test hoverboards and rocket-propelled sticky bombs, is a disappointingly short-lived blast since it's limited to just three missions. Come on. The Bright Future Venture, however, forces you to haul the same sluggish truck full of toxic waste barrels across the city for a total of 13 trips. Talk about a toxic waste of time. Completing the setup for these shady businesses is also rarely as fun as it sounds on paper. I was excited to open up a Cobra Kai inspired karate dojo, but my reward for doing so was a handful of wonky beat em up sections that handled like the yuckiest form of Yakuza. Then when I finally unlocked the late game heist missions, I was crushed to find out that you don't get to perform the actual robberies. Instead, you're forced to wait with the car while the rest of your gang goes inside to commit the actual crime. But check it out, I mean, you still get to wear an ex-president's mask, so it's kind of like Point Break. It's just missing the point. In almost every instance, these venture-based missions are just the same objectives copied and pasted over and over again. Want to run a food truck business? Steal a bunch of food trucks. Want to run an automotive chop shop? Steal a bunch of cars. Want to run a clothing empire? Design your own fashion range and figure out how to market it effectively. I'm kidding, you actually just steal a bunch of delivery trucks. There's no real challenge to any of this other than an enormous test of your endurance. Who knew that being the boss of a criminal empire would involve this amount of busy work? Right? Repetitive sandbox mission structure is just one of the many ways the new Saints Row feels burdened by design decisions that should have died along with the power supply on your PlayStation 2. There are aggravating instant fail stealth sections, Intruder move, alert! Move. Sound the alarms! Nagging prompts for you to return to a mission even when you haven't left it, and absolutely no nuance to the notoriety system. Forget exciting games of cat and mouse with the cops, often you can lose a wanted level just by driving in a straight line for a few blocks. That takes talent. There's also a noticeable lack of interactivity from what we've come to expect from modern open worlds, particularly post Grand Theft Auto V. You can't play these arcade games or ride these bicycles, and you certainly can't enter these giant casinos, let alone gamble in them. Pretty much your only interactions with the world around you is to shoot at it, jump off it, or smash it to bits. Santo Aliso provided a pretty canvas for my carnage, but it didn't feel like a world I could truly immerse myself in. I did appreciate a lot of the environmental design, however, and some smaller touches like locals setting off backyard fireworks in the evenings always stopped me in my tracks, as did the occasional sandstorm, although that was mainly because they made me feel like I'd momentarily stepped out of Saints Row 2022 and into Blade Runner 2049. Unfortunately, the sandy surrounds of Santo Aliso aren't the only rough edges to be found here. And my time with Saints Row was plagued by wonky physics, <laughs> I have somewhere to be. broken mission markers, oh, fuck me. surprisingly deadly pieces of furniture, <sighs> whatever is going on here, and nonsensical AI behavior. Wow, you saved me. You're like literally my hero. What now? Well, now we get out of here. Just whatever you do, don't sit back in that chair I just untied you from. Oh. Come on, mate. What did I just say? 
The AI isn't the only thing prone to mischief, and indeed Saints Row's two-player co-op allows you to play silly pranks on your partner by completing certain challenges. Yet while transforming your mate into a toilet or a vending machine may cause a few laughs at first, the novelty quickly wears off. And besides, none of the deliberate pranks are as funny as the unintentionally hilarious bugs. This poor bastard looks like he's being pranked by God. Otherwise, my time with co-op on PC has been rife with connection problems, and even when it does work, having a second player in tow does little to elevate Saints Row's more menial tasks. Still, at least I had someone to wait in the car with me during the heists. I'll make you bleed. Help! Someone help me! Star! Hang on, I'll cover you! For a game that gives us so much freedom to be exactly who we want to be via its superb customization options, it's odd that Saints Row itself struggles to forge its own identity. There's definitely no shortage of shallow shoot 'em up thrills to be had here, but it's a very familiar and uninspired brand of sandbox fun that's unlikely to wow anybody who's played a Saints Row game before, much less a GTA. There are a few spectacular story moments, and the city of Santo Aliso serves as a sprawling new playground for user-created carnage, but the distinct lack of new gameplay ideas, and the frequency with which some of its least interesting ones are reused, means this Saints Row feels more like a repetitive retread than a proper reboot. It's definitely a new gang of saints, but they're guilty of the same old sins. Wow, at least we've got a cool logo. For more IGN reviews, check out our verdicts on Rumbleverse and Cult of the Lamb. And for everything else, stick with IGN.